When doing reptile photography, there are three main situations where I would fire my flash. The first situation is obvious. Sometimes there's just not enough light, like when I'm herping at night or shooting in a very shaded area. The second reason is to create negative space. Negative space is a photography technique that helps the subject stand out from its surroundings. One way is to utilize a shallow depth of field to blur out the background, but using a flash to selectively light up the subject while leaving the background in the dark also achieves a similar effect. The third reason to fire a flash is to allow proper exposure of both the foreground and the background. If the scene behind the subject is too bright, proper exposure of the subject means the background will be overexposed, which washes out all the details in the background. Using a flash to illuminate the subject can allow proper exposure of both the foreground and the background. This is how I capture the details and the colours of the sky while still having my subjects properly exposed. Unfortunately, it is not as simple as popping out the built-in flash of the camera and firing away. A regular flash is usually too harsh of a light source. It produces images where the transition between light and shadow is sudden and creates very flat two-dimensional images that are just not visually pleasing. The key to a softer light is to distribute the light source over a large surface area relative to the subject. This is why diffusers are useful. They increase the surface area of the light source. The bigger the diffuser, the softer the light. But for herping out in the field, it's challenging to use one of those umbrella-style diffusers found in photography studios. So something that can be handheld would be better suited for herping. My diffuser design is largely based on the Cygnus Tech diffuser. It seems like a very popular diffuser on the market. I like it because it's attached to the camera so I can free up one hand, it's compact and it can easily be folded up for transport. Here's how I made it. The front of the diffuser is the part that diffuses. I drew up and 3D printed a thin film of white plastic on the textured print bed. I also embedded a sheet of tool fabric within the plastic film so the hinge part can move freely without being subjected to material fatigue failure. My first print did not have the tool fabric hinge, and the plastic gave way in no time. The hinge part of the diffuser has two holes that would accept two plastic snap-on buttons so that it can be attached to the other part of the diffuser. The second part of the diffuser is the reflector. It just helps direct more light forward. I drew up the shape of the reflector on my laptop and laser cut some prototypes with paper. It took a lot of trial and error to find the shapes and dimensions that work. I then laminated a gloss white film to a black piece of polyethylene plastic sheet and cut it to shape on the laser cutter. I added some elastic bands and hardware for the diffuser and put everything together. After using it for just a few times, I already ran into a problem. The white film kept coming apart from the black plastic sheet when it bends, creating bubbles and creases. So I decided to explore making the reflector part by 3D printing also. The challenge is that my printer is just not big enough to print the whole thing as one piece so I have to print it in multiple parts and glue it all together. I swapped the 3D build plate to a smooth build plate to get a reflective surface and changed the plastic filament halfway to get white colour on one side and black on the other. Once the three components of the reflector were done printing, I glued them together using super glue. The first 3D printed design had a weak point down the middle that bent and creased easily. So I made the middle piece thicker. But now the middle piece is too thick and too rigid, so it created two new weak points next to it that creased. The solution is to only reinforce the weak spots, and that seemed to have worked well. The diffuser works very well in the majority of situations, but one limitation is that it's restricted to being mounted on the camera. The simple solution to that is my 3D printed bounce cart style diffuser that can be used with an off-camera flash. 
I'm able to change the direction of the light source for a different effect. It is also so light and easy to pack so I always just carry it with me so I have the option of changing things up. I haven't used either of these diffusers for long, so time will tell how well they hold up with user abuse. But overall, I think having these two new diffusers have already elevated the quality of my light source, and I've been loving the aesthetics of how the photos turn out. <laughs> 